we have a heavenly father who keeps us in his heart and also in his hands. My message this morning is the father's hand. The father's hand. I want you to just close your eyes and just seek the Lord for a while. Father, we thank you, God, this morning for this wonderful worship. We thank you for your presence. It's so real. We thank you for ministering to us, Lord. Now, Lord, even as we go into the ministry of your word, we pray let your word come alive to your people. I pray, Father, some area of this short, simple sharing will touch every person, not only the fathers, but the mothers and everyone in this place, Father. Lord, bring a life, Father. Help us to have a special discernment this morning of who you are as a father who is a protector and a father who is the porter. We thank you, God, this morning. Let your word minister to our hearts, Father. We just want to take your word and live the life the way you want us to live. We ask all this in Jesus' name precious name. Amen. 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 As I told you, the, my message is the Father's hand. As for Father's Day, God began to give me some different thoughts about being a father. Now, we have had many Father's Day year after year, but God is so personal. God is so wonderful. And He always gives something for us to catch and be excited about. All right. Now, this morning I'm going to speak to you about, I, I've never thought about this topic about Father's hand. But many, many years ago, about 20 years ago, I preached on a message, the hand of God. No, I mean, I just completely forgot about that. And the Spirit of God was reminding me this past one week about the hand of God. And that's why this morning I just want to minister to you on the Father's hand. The Bible speaks about the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord and the phrase, hand of God, is found 16 times in the Bible. It's found 16 times in the Bible and 7 times in the Old Testament and, and 9 times in the New Testament. So this is not something... New for every one of us. We have gone through the scriptures and we know the Bible talks about the hand of God. Right? The mighty hand of God created the world and he created the universe. He created you and I who are sitting here. The hand of God, friends, shaped us and molded us as because he is our maker and he is our creator. He shaped us. He molded us. All right? Now, there are three terms that, that is used in the Bible interchangeably. The three terms that are used interchangeably about the Father's hand. One is the hand of God. The second is the arm of God. And the third, the finger of God. And all these three terms are used interchangeably in the word of God, talking about the Father's hand, the hand of God. All right. Now the first one is Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17, the scripture is there. Jeremiah chapter two and, uh, 32 and verse 17 says, Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. And then in Psalms 8 and verse 3, Psalms 8 and verse 3 says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers... The moon and the stars which you have ordained. And then Exodus 8 and verse 19 says, The magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. You remember when Pharaoh had, had snakes and, and, and Moses threw the rod and the, the rod became a snake. And then even the magicians did the same. There were many other snakes. But the, the snake out of the rod of Moses swallowed up all the other snakes. So when, when this happened, the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. And then the final scripture, Luke 11 and verse 20, is, Jesus says, but if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, I want to share with you this morning just two powerful characteristics of the Father's hand. 
It's not going to be a very big message. It's just a sharing from my heart. And, and, and I believe that the word of God will speak to each one of us. All right? Poor powerful script characteristics of the Father's hand. And one is Father's hand as a protector. Every father sitting here knows how we, we feel so part of being protecting our children. We want to make sure our children don't fall into the trap. We want to make sure our, our children don't go astray. We feel such burden in our heart that, our, that the children have got to come back to, to, to the right path. All right? So every father has got a heart of protection within us. But the father, father God has got something special. Now, Father God, Father's hand is a protector. It is the power of God's hand that protects. It is the power of God's hand that protects you and that protects me. It is the power of God's hand of God that the Father delivers us and He guides us. All your life as a Christian, you realize that God guides you in some situations that you, you go into. Some decisions you have to make. He guides you. All right, what is he doing? He's actually protecting you from getting and going down into the, into the pit. He protects you, he guides you, and he delivers you. All right, now the mighty hand of God communicates with his people. He communicates with his people by the power of the hand of God, it brings different kinds of dealings in our lives. God's hand brings about different kinds of dealings in our lives. Now, some of these dealings that we go through in our lives as a Christian, some of you are 30 years Christian, some of you are 50 years Christian, some of you are 10 years Christian, but you know and recognize there is dealings of God's hand upon your life. Now, we were singing that first song. I was think, thinking of, I mean, somebody could be in the middle of the storm. Somebody could be in the middle of the storm. But I want to tell you, friends, the Father God sometimes allows in His dealings with us to be in the middle of the storm. You may be in the middle of the storm, but we want you to know that the storm is controlled by Father God. Father God controls the storm. So you may be in the middle of the storm, you may be going through difficult circumstances, but you want need to know that Father God protects you in the middle of the storm. And so friends, we need to understand all these dealings in our life that he does, he actually communicates to us. He communicates with us. Why does he do that? To get our attention. Sometimes to build us up. Sometimes to build us up. And also to cause us to mature. You know? Now if you go look back at your life many, many years ago, all the situations and circumstances that were tough and you went through it, and that's why today you have faith to stand. It is the situations and dealings that God has allowed in your life to make you strong and to make you mature, all right? Now, God's hand is upon you, friends. God's hand is upon you, and God's hand is upon Harvest Revival Center. Somebody say amen to that loudly. Not so loud. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. God's hand has been on Harvest Revival Center. Now, from... I, when you begin to look at it, it's almost 30 years, we can see the hand of God upon Harvest Revival Center stage by stage by stage. All right, we see one after another. You know, the hand of the Lord protects the church and he guides the church. And it is the Father's hand that delivers the church and he, from one situation to another situation. Every church goes through different situations in the life of the church. Different situations. And it's the hand of God that takes us and delivers us from one situation in the church to another situation. There are a lot of bad things happen. There may be good things happen. But all the way, the hand of the Lord has been upon Harvest Revival Center. All right? So it is the hand of God that has brought this church thus far by His grace. It is the hand of God. I tell you, friends, it is the hand of God that has given favor to Harvest Revival Center. Do you know many, many churches, they may be 40 years, 50 years old, but they have never been able to own their own building. It is the hand of God that allowed Harvest Revival Center to own our own property. It is the favor of God. It is the hand of God. Or right, when you look at it all the way, it's the hand of God. And today, if I'm standing here and still preaching, it is still the hand of God. If I'm still surviving and I'm still thriving, it's the hand of God. 
Long time ago, I would have one moose. <laughs> you know, but it's the hand of God that makes you still survive and still thrive on. And I, I, in my heart, I just want to go higher. I want to go deeper in God's ways. I want the hand of God to fully, fully control me. Many times we, we, we don't allow God to fully control us. We try to do things on our own. But I want the hand of God to fully control us. All right? Now, now we who are God's people are in His hands. Okay? We all know that. Now, no one is able to pluck us out of the hand of God. I want you to look into scriptures, John chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. John 10, verses 28 and 29. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. And verse 29, my father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. And I and my father are one. So no one can pluck you out of the father's hand. No one can pluck you out. Only one person. Only one person can do that. Only you. Only I. Me. Only you can walk away from the hand of God. Only you can walk away from the hand of God. Only you can deliberately walk away from the plans of God. Only you can walk away uh, deliberately and rebel against uh, uh, what He wants to allow in our lives. As I told you, He wants to allow certain dealings in our lives and, and, and situations in our lives. Only you can walk away from His plan. Only you can walk away from what He has for you. God wants to do something in our life. Only you and I can walk away from, his, from what He wants to do in our life. Nobody else can snatch us out of His hand. We are in His hand. All right? Only you can do that. Only you and I can rebel and prevent Him from molding us for His glory. Preventing Him from molding us for His glory. So friends, when God puts you in His hand, he is actually delivering you from situations. Often you can feel the pressure when God's hand begins to squeeze. I don't know how many of you get what I'm trying to say. You're in the hand of God and often God's hand squeezes. Often God's hand squeezes. You know when we sin and do things that is displeasing to God or moving away from the things of God, what God will do is his hand, he squeezes his hand. When he squeezes his hand, you feel the hand of God pressurizing you. You feel the hand of God. I, don't, I wonder how many of you have experienced that the squeeze of God's hand recently. You know, very often we as God's children, we refuse, we refuse to turn away from the things of God. We move on and, and go on in doing things that we want to do. But God begins to squeeze your hand because we are still in His hands. We are still in His hands. When we go away from God trying to do things that are not right and displeasing to God, He squeezes His hand and you begin to feel it. And until, sometimes He keeps squeezing until you come to a point, enough God, enough God, why, why is it happening for so long? Why am I suffering like this for so long? Alright? Sometimes God begins to squeeze. Now I want to give you a, a scriptural reference of what He did, did to the Psalmist David. Psalm 32 and verse 4. Psalm 32 and verse 4, it says, For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. It was like the squeeze, like the squeeze of this hand. Day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality has turned into drought of summer. My vitality has turned into drought of summer. Now, you notice here, the psalmist David, he sinned against Bathsheba. All right, you all know that. He sinned against Bathsheba and he was feeling guilty. He was feeling guilty day and night. And the scripture says, he, feel, he felt God's hand upon him heavy. He felt God's hand heavy upon him. Exactly what I was trying to tell you about the squeeze of the hand of God. All right, Here, the psalmist David felt the God's hand heavy upon him and he felt dryness. All right, He feels dryness in his soul. He feels heat. The scripture says he feels he, his energy and strength turn into drought of summer. That means the heat, hot, 
he felt dryness in his soul. He felt the heat of like of summer. And friends, this morning, you may be going through a situation like this. You may feel lonely. You may feel that you, you, that you are aimless. You feel that you are uh, no focus and uh, you don't have a purpose. And, and you, you feel that you are, you are lost. And you feel the hand of God heavy upon you. You feel the hand of God heavy upon you. Not because God hates you. Not because God is angry with you for doing something wrong. He's not, not because he just neglected you, but what we need to understand is that you are still in the hands of the Father. You're still in the hands of the Father. You're feeling the heat, the heaviness upon your life because you have deviated from what he wants you to do, what wants you to become, all right? Now David, the psalmist David, felt the hand of God heavy upon him and he felt that he was so spiritually dry. He felt that his, the presence of God was being taken away. Remember the scripture, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew, renew a right spirit within me. He felt the presence of God left him. He felt the pressure of, 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 pressure of hand of God upon him. He felt so guilty of what he has done with Bathsheba. And, 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 and so that heaviness of his, the hand of God upon him caused him to feel so dry and so heavy. And I want to tell you, friends, if you are going through that situation this morning, we do not know who you are, we do not know any situation, but if you are, or if you do go through a situation like this, all you have to do is return to God. Return to the Father. Return to Him. As you come back to the Father, the heaviness of the hand of God will not be upon you. All right? If you are in that situation, you're spiritually dry, you feel the hand of God upon you, draw nigh to God. And He will draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. So your life situations, friends, need God. Your life situations need God. Your family needs God. All right? You need God to prosper. You need to God, not God to prosper you in all areas of your life. Now the hand of God keeps you from going astray and brings you back to righteousness and justice. It's the hand of God that brings you back to righteousness, that brings you back uh, to justice. The hand of God disciplines. The hand of God disciplines, but the hand of God also comforts and strengthens you. I'm sure you have experienced the times that you were so down. You were, so, you, were, you were crying all night. You were so heavy in your heart. He came in the middle of the night and he comforted you. He gave you a scripture and comforted you. And he strengthened you. This is the Father God I'm talking about this morning. You know, the hand of God disciplines us, but the hand of God also comforts and he strengthens us. The hand of God protects us. The hand of God protects you, but when you deliberately walk out, walk out of uh, God's principles and God's righteousness, what happens is the edge of protection around us is lost. In every one of us who are believers, we have a edge of protection around us. All right, God begins to have a, give us a protection around us, and uh, nothing can touch us or harm us. But the moment when we come out, when we deliberately come out, uh, come out and walk out of God's principles and righteousness, what happens? The edge of protection is lost. When the edge of protection is lost, I tell you friends, that the enemy, you are vulnerable to the enemy. The moment you deliberately come out of God's principles and righteousness, you, the, the edge is broken and you're vulnerable to the enemy. And what happens? The enemy is excited. The enemy is so excited that you deliberately came out of the hand of God. You wanted to come out of the hand of God and you wanted to go away from God. The enemy is very happy, but God wants you back to him. All right? Now, I just want to, uh, to consider a little bit about how the Lord brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. All right? Let me read a scripture to you. Deuteronomy 26 and verse 8. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And with an outstretched arm, mighty hand, outstretched arm. You know, when the Lord brings you out of a particular situation, He is going to put you into another better situation. That's what the Father does. When He brings you out of one particular situation, He'll always bring you to something better. All right? He brought the Israelites all the way from Egypt, even in the wilderness, they were protected. Even in the wilderness, they were protected. All right? So the Lord has taken you and I out of darkness into the kingdom of light. 
He has taken us out of darkness and brought us into light. We are now people of light. So you and I, friends, have been relocated. We have been relocated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. We have been relocated. Now, why does God do this? Now, God wants to bring us up to maturity. He wants us to bring us to maturity and wants every one of us to experience the wonder-working power and the heart of the Father. He wants us to experience that. You remember? uh, Joseph, he relocated Joseph from where? From the prison to the palace. At one time, he was a prisoner and then he became the king. He was in the palace, all right? Now, God's idea is to protect us by his mighty hand and lead us with greater dimensions of faith. He wants to take us to a different dimension of faith. All the dealings you have gone through, he has protected you so that you will be kept in his hands and he brings you to a place where you can go to a higher level and dimension of faith. That's exactly what he wants to do for every believer. Don't ever think, oh, I'm only an ordinary member of the church. I'm not a leader, so I just come and I go. I just come to church, I worship and I go. No, every one of us, every one of us, he's got a plan and he wants to bring you to the dimension of faith. He wants to bring you to a place of faith where in most difficult situation, you will say, I will still stand in faith. All right, great is his faithfulness. We are in his hand and that is our confidence. That is our confidence, all right? So the father's hand as a protector. And none of you will say as a father that you won't protect your children. Every one of us want to protect their children, all right? The second thing is the father's hand as a porter. The father's hand as a porter. If you look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, the whole chapter of Jeremiah 18, he talks about the porter and the clay. All right, the potter and the clay. The father's hand is the hand of the potter. The father's hand is the hand of the potter. The potter, with his creativity, with his creativity, makes a beautiful vessel. That's what the potter does. All right, with a beautiful vessel. Now, the potter molds and shapens us. The potter molds and shapens us, and he works on the clay. All right, he works on the clay, he presses the clay, he he, he moves the presses in in, in a different position and he touches, he touches every area of the clay. Now a potter who wants to make a vessel, does, does, does he only touch one part of the clay? No, he touches every part of the clay, he presses every part of the clay to make a beautiful vessel. In the same way, he touches us physically, he touches us emotionally, spiritually, and financially, and there is no area in our life that he doesn't touch. There's no area in our life he doesn't touch. All right? If he has touched you physically, he has touched you physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in every way, there's no area that he doesn't know. He knows all about you, and he knows all about me. He knows all about us. I want to read another scripture to you in Psalm 139, 13 to 16. Psalm 139, 13 to 16 says, For you formed my inward parts. The psalmist is saying, okay? You for, you, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. And verse 14 says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And verse 15 says, My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. Friends, you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. You and I are fearfully and wonderfully made by the Lord our God who is the potter. He who is the potter. There is nothing secret or nothing private in us that he doesn't know. There's nothing secret or private in us that he doesn't know. Every one of us, even the deep intentions of our heart, he knows, all right? He knows what you are thinking. He knows what you're planning to do. Even after the service, what you're planning to do. He knows what you're planning to do. He knows that you're going to be here this morning. He knew. He knew that you're going to be here this morning in this service. He knows the deep secrets in our heart and he knows you because he made you. He knows us because he made us. Now, sometimes we try to hide from God. 
You know, when we do some things that we know that something's wrong and we shouldn't be doing that, we try to hide from God, we try to hide from everybody, and we think nobody knows. All right? We try to hide from God. But He knows the rough edges of our lives. He knows the ugly parts in our life. He knows the rough edges. He knows the ugly parts. He knows everything. What He's saying is, God, what God is saying to us is, you are, my, you are the clay in my hand. You are the clay in my hand. Come to me in honesty. Come to me in openness. Come to me in openness and honesty and, and sincerely. That's what God is saying to us this morning. Come to us. Come to Him in openness. Um, don't run from God. You know, when, when, when things bad, bad happens, something happens that you didn't like, don't run from God. Run to God. Run to God. You know why? He's a father. He is a father. The heavenly father has a heart of understanding. You know, when you talk about heavenly father has a heart of understanding, I mean, we, we fathers sometimes lack in some understanding sometimes, earthly fathers. But a heavenly father has got a powerful, wholesome heart of understanding. He understands you much more than you think about yourself. All right? That is the understanding of the heart of God. The Father has a heart of forgiveness. The Father has a heart of forgiveness and a heart of compassion. I mean, every human father will have a compassion for the children. They have a, a forgiveness. But I want to tell you, many fathers don't even forgive their children. When the children have not obeyed them and gone astray, many fathers don't, don't obey. But the Father heart of God, I'm talking about, He is the heart of understanding, a great understanding, heart of forgiveness, and a heart of compassion. So the, the potter, the potter molds us, he shapes us, he molds us, because he wants to beautify us. He wants to beautify us. He wants to make us better Christians. He wants to make us beautiful Christians and believers. All right? Now, as we allow him to shape us, he will make something beautiful out of our life. You remember there's an old, very old song. Something beautiful, something... Uh, no, something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All that I had to offer him is brokenness and strife. He made something beautiful out of my life. This morning, friends, He wants to make something beautiful out of your lives. If you're going through all the circumstances and situations in your life, say, Hallelujah, Father, I love you. Father, I surrender to you because your dealings on my life is because you want to protect me from the devil. You want to protect me from the wiles of the enemy. All right? So He wants to make something beautiful out of our life. All right. Now one more scripture that I just want to go on. Jeremiah 18 and verse 4. Jeremiah 18 and verse 4 says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. M-A-R-R-E-D. The vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. All right, let me get back to that. Now, the word marred, the word marred means messed up. The word marred means messed up, ruined, worthless, all right, worthless or no use. Now, you can be marred in the hand of the potter. You can be marred in the hand of the potter. You may claim to be in the Lord. You may be claiming to the, be in the Lord. You, 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 you are attending church regularly. You give your tithes, you do whatever needs to be done, but messed up without a focus in life. Messed up without a, 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 a purpose in life. All right? Sometimes we are ruined. We feel ruined. We feel confused. Not knowing the will of God for your life. Not knowing the will of God for your life. You feel messed up. You feel ruined. You feel confused. All right? Maybe some of us here are questioning God. Are questioning God, what's the purpose of living? What is the purpose of my, my living here? What is the purpose? Why do I have to go through certain situations in my life? All right? But here, God begins to see you as clay in His hand. All right? He begins to see you as clay in His hand. And, and what happens is, when we don't see the hand of God on our lives, we try to do so many things and think about so many things in our own mind. All right? There is no excitement in your Christian walk. 
There's no excitement in Christian walk and everything is, it seems to be stale and maybe you feel bored, all right? Maybe you feel messed up. Maybe you feel messed up, feel useless and worthless, all right? You feel worthless, but you are in the hands of the potter. Now, this potter that I'm talking about is not an ordinary potter, all right? He is not an ordinary potter. He is the Father God. He is the creator and he is the, the savior. He is the healer. He is the deliverer and he is the restorer of your life. Some of you sitting here know in some area of your life some years ago how he restored you. Today you are who, are who you are because he restored you. All right? He is the restorer of life. Now friends, if you will stay in the hand of the potter, if you will stay in the hand of the potter in the father's hand, he will strengthen you, he will encourage you and put you back upon your feet. He'll put you back upon your feet and you will rise up in faith and confidence. You'll rise up in faith and confidence. You know, sometimes the devil, Satan and his demons will come to you and say, you are useless. La. You are useless. You are a failure. You are a failure. There's nothing good came out from your life. You know, in the world, when the potter realizes that the clay is useless and he is so much of impurities in the clay, what he will do in the world is he will throw away the clay. He will throw away the clay. But Father God, as the potter, what he does is, you know, in verse 4 we read, I want to read that part again. He says, when the clay was marred in the hand of the potter, he made it again to another vessel. He made it again into another vessel in the world. They will see the clay with so much of impurities. They throw it away. It's worthless, useless. But here, the scripture says, when the clay was marred in the hand of the potter, he made it again. He made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. So friends, we see the Father God is the potter who is forgiving. He never keeps a record of your past. The Father God never keeps record of your past. He gives you another chance. He gives you another chance to return to Him. Your Father God never keeps a record of the past and He forgets everything. The moment you come and say, Lord, forgive me, He cleanses you and He forgets about your past. He never keeps record of your past. So He, he gives you another chance. I want to tell you, friends, our God, the potter, is a God of the second chance. God of the second chance. So none of us should feel, oh, I've messed up my life. I cannot go on. I'm not progressing. I cannot go on. But I want to tell you, our God is a God of a second chance. He always gives a second chance. And I want you to read to you one more scripture, Jeremiah 18 and verse 6. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter? Can I not do with you as the potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Now God the Father, who is potter, has got every right to do whatever he wants to you. Let me get this straight. The, the potter, he has got every right to do whatever he wants to do in our life because he is the potter and we are the clay. Just like how the potter wants to make and shape the, the vessel in a beautiful way, the way he feels is beautiful. I want you to know, people of God, that the potter, the Father God who is the potter, he has got every right to do everything that he wants to do in our lives just because he's the potter. Just because he's the Father who's the potter. Often we Christians, friends, we, 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 will, we will say, Lord, let your will be done, let your will be done. But we are still working out our way somehow to get things done for, for our purpose. Many times we say, God, let your will be done. But you take steps to do what you actually want. All right? So many times we do that and Christians do that and, and what we are doing is we are actually struggling with the potter. We are actually struggling with the potter. When God is trying to do something in your life and you are trying to find your own way out to solve your situation and your circumstances, you are actually struggling with the potter because you want your own will. Struggling with the potter, all right? Now, he knows what is best for us. He knows what he is doing in our lives and he knows what he wants you to become. He knows, all right? So let's not fight the potter. 
Let's not fight the potter. We are the clay. The clay doesn't have rights. The clay doesn't have rights, but the potter has the rights over the clay. All right? The potter has the right over the clay. And you know, friends, we need to understand here at this point, His will for you, His will for you brings peace and contentment. His will for you brings peace and contentment. So when He's trying to make it in such a way that you will flow with His will, what He wants to give you is peace. What He wants to give you is contentment in your life. So His will for you brings peace and contentment. His will for you is to prosper you. Never to put you down. Always to give you a future. Give you a hope. All right? His will for you is to, to prosper you. All right. I'm talking about the potter and how he makes the vessel, right? Now, when the potter has finished with the vessel he has made, what he does is he will always put it on the shelf. After he does the, 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 the vessel, he will take and put it on the shelf for a period of time for it to dry and consolidate. Right? After he does the, the vessel, he put it on the shelf for some period of time. So that it will become dry and, and consolidate before he sends it to, for the polishing to be sold. All right? That's what the potter will do. Now, sometimes you and I feel that we are in the shelf. You feel that you have been put in the shelf. Do you feel that you're not progressing? Do you feel that you're not progressing? Are you brooding with unsatisfaction in your life? Are we brooding with unsatisfaction in your ministries? You know, sometimes uh, uh, those doing ministries will complain, you know, uh, that, that they're not given a, a chance to minister. So we don't understand why they don't give me a chance to minister. But you need to understand there are times that God puts you on a shelf and the purpose of putting you on the shelf, He will reveal to you. All right? And so you may be feeling that you are, you are rotting. You may feel that you're rotting. But God often puts us on the shelf and we feel that He has forgotten us. He has forgotten us. But the period of time you have been on the shelf is part of God's plan and will for your life. It's part of God's plan and will for your life. You may ask the Lord, why do I have to wait so long? Lord, why do I have to wait so long? I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. Why do I have to wait so long? We are still questioning. We are still questioning God. Why Lord? Why Lord? Questioning God. Alright? And still, sometimes still, we, are, we marajok with God. We marajok with the potter. <laughs> I don't know how many of you can, 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 uh, can identify this. You know, when God doesn't allow things in your life which, which you expected and it didn't take place, you and I sometimes marajok. We marajok with the potter, not knowing it's a potter that he protects you to do the best for you. It is the potter who tries to make a beautiful vessel out of you. All right? So very often, we marajok with the potter. All right? Just a few more seconds, we're going to close. What I want to tell you, friends, this waiting time on the shelf. When you're put in the shelf, you feel you're not progressing, you're moving, you're stuck. But the waiting time is listening time. The waiting time on the shelf is listening time. All right, when you begin to listen, when you begin to listen, you won't get upset with God. You don't get upset with the porter, all right? Let's not be upset with God, but listen to the small, still, inner voice that is speaking to your heart. Small, still, inner voice that is speaking to our hearts. You know, our period of time on the shelf sometimes is extended. Our period of time on the shelf sometimes is extended until we say from our heart, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Sometimes the period of you being in the shelf is extended until you come to a place of saying, Lord, let your will be done in my life with all your heart. When you say that, then you're taken out from the shelf, ready to move to the next stage of your life. All right? So sometimes the shelf part becomes extended due to our own will. Our own strong will can prevent God from taking us out of the shelf and moving us in the ministry. Some of you are saying, oh, I'm praying, praying, praying God to show me what ministry God wants me to do. But so far, nothing. Sometimes, it is you who are delaying. It is you who are delaying the call of God. When God says, come, wait God, Lord, wait, oh, I, must, I must prepare myself. Sometimes we say, we must prepare ourselves. No, we don't have to prepare. He prepares us. When He calls you, He prepares you. 
All right? So we need to understand, come to a place of saying, yes, Lord, let your will be done. And what we need to have to come here at this point, friends, as to know the Father as a potter, we need to submit to his plans. Submit to his plans. All right? Submit to his timing. Submit to his plan, submit to his timing, and you will understand that how you begin to have a total surrender. Many times God allows you to go through all the situations in your life because he wants you to come to the place of submission to his timing. Submission to his timing. There was a, there was a, 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 a believer who received a prophetic word that God is calling him into the ministry, and when he got the prophetic word, he immediately went and, and resigned from his government job. And since then, he got no job. He never got into the ministry. He never got a job. He lost his job. Because he did not know the timing of his call. You can be called, a specific call, but there is a timing to your call to come out and prosper. All right. When he heard the prophetic word, immediately went and resigned. And he lost his job the rest of his life. Until today, he's still got no job. All right? So this is something that we need to understand. We need to submit to his timing. We need to submit to his timing and submit to his plans. Because the Father has placed you in his hand. In his Father's hand. You are placed in the hand of God ever since, you are, ever since you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour. The moment you've accepted Christ the Lord as, the, as, as your Savior, you are now placed in His hand. Remember that scripture that I read just now, my Father who has given them to me is greater. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Alright, that scripture, I, I will repeat the scripture, I and my Father are one. We see here, the Father God has a specific plan and will for your life. The Father God has a specific plan and will for your life. Alright? So what we need to do, friends, as believers, as I'm closing this, this, this message this morning, I mean, as winding up, and uh, what we need to know is we've got to remain in His hand. We've got to remain in His hand and not willfully come out of His plan, come out of His, of his directions. All right, yes, the musicians can come to the front. So what we need to do, we need to remain in His hand. We need to remain in His hand, all right, and discover His very purpose for you. You will only discover your purpose, His purpose for you, when you still remain in His hand. And I told you, nobody can pluck you out, only you can come out willfully out of His plan and out of His purpose. So friends, we need to understand His very purpose by submitting to His dealings, submitting to His will, and so that you and I can become children who are submissive to the Father. Now, I, 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 as I close, I, I trust that every believer will say, Lord, you are my father. I want to submit to you. I want to submit to your plans. I want to submit to your will. I want to submit to your timing. And I don't want to, to barrage you in the future. Lord, as a believer, as you mature in the Lord, your barrage will disappear. As you don't mature in the Lord, after 40 years being a Christian, you will still barrage with the potter. Why is God doing this to me? Why God so long? Why? You know, we fight with the potter. But as you mature, less and less you become rajo with the potter. All right, we need to understand that, friends. And finally, in conclusion, the Father's hand is mighty. The Father's hand is mighty. The Father God who dried up the, the Jordan River, He dried up the Red Sea for the people of Israel to, 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 to cross over. He miraculously dried up the sea so that His people can cross over. What about you? You are in a situation in your life that you want to cross over. You are thinking that it's so tough. You think that it's going to be so difficult. It's not possible. But I want to tell you, the hand of God is a mighty hand. He can do things. He can miraculously change your situation. He can miraculously overnight change everything that you're going through. He can miraculously do just like how He did for the children of Israel. He can change your situation. He can change your circumstance. And God is a miraculous God. So allow Him 